Dear Calculus 2 students, in this video, I will help you understand the difference between the convergence of a sequence versus the convergence of its corresponding series. We'll do eight examples. This is the first one. First, the question says, does this sequence converge? Whenever the question is asking you this, all we are doing is checking the limit as n goes to infinity of a n. Well, we do not have a formula for an yet, so we better come back here and then write an explicit formula for that first. On the top, though, we see we have 3, 5, 7, 9, and 2. Well, it's just an arithmetic sequence, right? Each time we go up by 2. And the 2 will be the coefficient of n. And now, because n starts with 1, 2 times 1 is 2 already. How much more do we have to add in order to get to 3? One more, right? So it's 2n plus 1 for the top. Over the bottom, 4, 7, 10, 13, 16. Each time we go up by 3. So the, that's the coefficient of n. And when n is equal to 1, put it here, 3 times 1 is 3. And then what else do we need in order to get to 4? One more. So 3n plus 1. And that's the formula for that. So. We just have to compute the limit as n goes to infinity of 2n plus 1 over 3n plus 1. And because we have n is approaching infinity, we can just compare the dominating part on the top and the dominating part on the bottom. In this case, 2n over 3n. Well, n and n cancel, so the result is just 2 over 3. And because we have a finite value for this limit, that means a n does converge. So we say a n converges, and we also can say it converges to 2 over 3. Now for part b, does the series of a n converge? For this question, because we have the limit as n goes to infinity of a n is equal to 2 over 3, which is not equal to 0, so we can come here and say this series actually diverges. Why? We can quote by the test for divergence. And the reason for this is because earlier we saw that the limit as n goes to infinity of a n, this is equal to 2 over 3, which is not equal to 0. So we can just quote that, and then we are done. So what exactly does this mean though? Firstly, this notation means that we are going to look at all these numbers and then add them up. So the question is, if we do 3 over 4 plus 5 over 7 plus 7 over 10, and so on, so on, so on, forever, are we going to end up with a finite result? Well, the answer for this one is no because the limit of a n is 2 over 3. That implies, at some point, we are just pretty much adding a bunch of 2 over 3. In fact, infinitely many of 2 over 3s. So of course, when you add up all this, this right here will definitely go to infinity. Therefore, the series diverges by what we call the test for divergence. However, we have to be careful though. If the limit as n goes to infinity of a n does equal to 0, we cannot say the series converges right away. But don't worry, we have more examples coming. Now, for the second one, 3 over 5, negative 1 over 5, 1 over 15, negative 1 over 45, 1 over 135. Let's come up with a formula for this first. In fact, this right here is actually just a geometric sequence. Because each every time, we're just multiplying by negative 1, over 3. 1 times negative 1, and then 15 times 3, right? Negative 1 times negative 1, 45 times 3. And in fact, if you take 3 over 5 times negative 1 over 3, the 3 and 3 cancel, you get that as well. So geometric, that means the first term we put down first, which is 3 over 5, times the common ratio, which is negative 1 over 3, and then raised to the n minus 1 power. Now, does a n converge? Again, 
compute the limit as n goes to infinity of a n, which is that 3 over 5 times negative 1 over 3 raised to the n minus 1 power. When we have a geometric sequence, take a look at the common ratio. Here, r is equal to negative 1 over 3. If the absolute value of r is less than 1, when we have an exponential part, right, because this is technically like an exponential function, if the base has the absolute value less than 1, and when n goes to infinity, you know this right here will go to 0. Or well, you can also just look at the behavior of the numbers, right? Even though they are alternating, changing between negative and positive, but the numbers are going to get smaller and smaller, approaching zero. So this right here is approaching zero. We can say a n does converge, and it converges to zero. OK, does that mean the series converges right away? Well, not right away in this case, but for this one, the series as n goes from 1 to infinity of a n, this is the same as saying series as n goes from 1 to infinity of a n, which is our geometric formula right here. Well, because we have a geometric series now, again, by looking at the common ratio, which is negative 1 over 3, it has the absolute value less than 1. So that means this thing right here will converge by the geometry series. Better yet, we actually know how to compute the value for a geometry series whenever it converges. All we have to do is look at the first term of the series, which is 3 over 5, and then divide it by 1 minus the common ratio, which is negative 1 over 3. And now let's just work this out. 3 over 5 over 1 plus 1 over 3, which is 4 over 3. And I will just multiply the top and bottom by its reciprocal. And then work that out. That's 9 over 20. So we can say our series, as n goes from 1 to infinity of a n, for this one, it will converge to 9 over 20. Now for number 3, we have 1 over 2, 1 over 4, 1 over 6, 1 over 8, 1 over 10, and so on, so on, so on. a n is just 1 over the even number 2 times n. Does a n converge? Let's check the limit as n goes to infinity of our formula here, which is 1 over 2n. If we put infinity to here, we have 1 over infinity, which is just equal to 0. So that means a n does converge, and we can say a n converges to 0. Now we have to be careful though. Even though a n converges to 0, but we cannot say anything with the series right away. In fact, for this one, the series as n goes from 1 to infinity of a n, a n is 1 over 2 n. Here, we have 1 over 2, right? It's just a constant multiple. In fact, we can put it on the outside. We can write this as 1 over 2 times the series as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n. Now, if we focus on this part, this right here is actually just the harmonic series. Because if you plug in 1, you get 1. If you plug in 2, you get 1 half. If you plug in 3, you get 1 over 3. And so on, so on, so on. And this right here is equal to infinity, which of course diverges. And if you want to see a proof for this, you can check out the video in the description. Usually, we just take this as like a fact because usually this proof is usually done in class. So we know that as a fact. Now, this series is just half of a divergent series. So of course, this series also diverges. So I'll just say the series as n goes from 1 to infinity of a n, this diverges because I'll just say half of 
the harmonic series still diverges. So as you can see, if an converges to zero, you can go either way. For question number two, it was a convergent. Right now, this right here is a divergent. Now for number four, one over two, three over four, nine over eight, 27 over 16, 81 over 32, and so on, so on, so on. A formula for an is what? The top is just always multiplying by 3, the bottom is always multiplying by 2, and in fact, it's just from the first to the second by multiplying 3 over 2. This is a geometric sequence. Starting with the first term, 1 half, times the common ratio, which is 3 over 2, raised to the n minus 1 power. Right here, does a n converge? We look at the limit as n goes to infinity, of 1 half times 3 over 2 raised to the n minus 1 power. Hmm, what do we do with this though? Have a look at the base here. The common ratio is 3 over 2, which is greater than 1. So in this case, this right here will be going to past infinity. And of course, you can also see the numbers right here as well. They are all positive, and the numbers are getting bigger and bigger with our boundary, right? So does a n converge in this situation? No, I will say a n diverges. You can say a n diverges to infinity, that's okay. But you cannot say a n converges to infinity, no. Convergence is only for finite values. Now, part B, does the series of an converge? For this case here, well, our limit of an is infinity already. So this right here, of course, diverges. But let's go ahead and put down some legitimate reason. Our series diverges, we can say by test for divergence. And again, let me just indicate that because our limit as n goes to infinity, of a n, which is infinity, and that is not equal to zero. So this is totally okay. Or, if you are dealing with this question right here, and let's say that's the only thing that you have on the test paper and nothing else, does it convert or not? What you can do is recognize this as a geometric series, right? because it's a series and this part is geometric. What you can write is, go ahead and indicate the common ratio, r, which is 3 over 2. And if you look at the absolute value of r, of course, this right here is bigger than 1. In another word, this is not, that this is, it means not less than 1. Therefore, we can say this right here diverges by geometric series test, just by looking at the common ratio. Okay, for number 5, we have a n already, and that's equal to n over n plus 2. Does a n converge? Well, let's just compute the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n plus 2. For this one, we can just look at the n and n here, and the over n is just equal to 1. So this is finite, that means a n does converge, and we can say it converges to 1. Done. If that's equal to 1, that means this right here is also very nice, right? Because the series of a n is just what? Diverges. Let's go ahead and write that down nicely. Our series diverges because of the test for divergence. And once again, because the limit as n goes to infinity of a n this right here, it was equal to 1, which is not equal to 0. So this right here is it. Now number 6, this, it's very similar to number 5, right? Except for we have this whole thing raised to the nth power. So does a n still converge? We take the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n plus 2 raised to the nth power. We know 
when n is approaching infinity, the inside will give us 1 from question number 5. But this time, we will have to put the infinity to the exponent here. So we are looking at 1 to the infinity's power. This right here is an indeterminate form. We cannot draw any conclusion yet, right? So what do we do? Well, the key to do this right here is to use one of the secret weapons. In this case, the fact. Take a look. If we have the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus some number a over n raised to the b times n power, this right here is equal to e raised to the a b's power. Now, we just have to first make this look the same as that. To do so, we are going to flip the inside. So we will have the limit as n goes to infinity. I'm going to have n plus 2 on the top over n because this way we get to split the fraction. But what else do I need to change though? I cannot just flip the inside because I wanted to. Well, we can do that as long as we negate the exponent. How's that? Yes. Now we can legitimately continue. This is the limit as n goes to infinity. n over n is just 1, and then plus 2 over n, and then this is raised to the negative n's power. Now this is in that form. So let's go ahead and say a is equal to 2, and then b is equal to negative 1. So we have the a and b values. So that means the limit is e to the 2 times negative 1, which is just negative 2. So does a n converge? Yes. And I'll say a n converges to e to the negative 2 or 1 over e squared, depending on how you want to say it. Now, does the series of a n converge? This is not zero. So this is still very nice, right? We can still say our series here n goes from 1 to infinity. This right here diverges by test for diverges. And once again, let me just make it super clear. Because the limit that we got earlier is equal to 1 over e to the second power, which is not equal to zero. So test for divergence help us out again. Now for number seven, we have a recursive formula. a1 equals five, an equals two minus the previous term. Does an converge? So right here, we are still going to check the limit as n goes to infinity of an. But I think we should just write down a first few terms of the sequence so we can get a feel about how this behaves, right? Starting with the first term, which is 5. And then the next term, we do 2 minus the previous. 2 minus the previous, we get negative 3. And then continue, we get 2 minus the previous. Aha! 2 minus negative 3, we get 5. And then you can guess it. If we do 2 minus the previous, we once again end up with negative 3. So in fact, this sequence is just 5, negative 3, 5, negative 3, 5, negative 3, like that all the time. So this limit does not exist. There's no limit for this sequence. Therefore, this sequence an diverges. And remember, there are two types of divergence. One is the an goes to infinity or negative infinity. The other one is like this. The limit does not exist. Now, does the series converge? Well, we don't even have a limit for this, right? So once again, we can say our series diverges by test for divergence. And right here, we can say because earlier we saw that the limit as n goes to infinity of a n does not exist. If it doesn't exist, of course it's not equal to zero. So we are done. Now number eight, a1 is equal to three. a n equals four minus n times the previous term. Does a n converge? 
Well, we will still have to check the limit as n goes to infinity of a n. And let's go ahead and just write down the first few terms to see what happens. Starting with 3. For this one, it's a little bit trickier because here we have n and this right here is the previous term. Remember, n starts with 1. Next is when n is equal to 2. So I will have to put a 2 right here. So we are looking at 4 minus 2. And then times the previous term, which is 3. So that's 2 times 3, which is 6. Hmm, the number is getting bigger, right? So maybe this right here diverges to infinity, but we don't know yet. Let's continue. When n equals 3, I will put it here, we are looking at 4 minus 3 times the previous term, which is 6. And then we'll get 1 times 6, that is equal to 6. Hmm. In fact, we get 6. But does that mean we always get 6? Well, we don't know yet. Let's try one more. When n is equal to 4, I will put a 4 in here. So we are looking at 4 minus 4 times the previous term, which is 6. Aha, what happens? That is going to be 0. And then what's going to happen is that, imagine if we do the n is equal to 5, we put 5 in here, we get 4 minus 5 times the previous term, which is 0, and here you get 0. So after this, you will always get 0. So in fact, the sequence is 3, 6, 6, 0, 0, 0, 0, all the way equal to 0. Therefore, this limit is indeed equal to 0. So does the sequence converge? Yes, it does. A n converges to zero. Now, does the series converge? Well, this time a n converges to zero, so we cannot say anything right away, right? But remember, this right here means what? This right here means we are just doing a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4 plus a5 plus da 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 forever. a1, we know that it's equal to 3 because it says so. And then a2, we know that's equal to 6. And then a3, we also see that that's equal to 6. But then a4, it's equal to 0. And then a5, it's also equal to 0. And anything after this, they are just always going to be equal to 0. So I'll just put down plus dot dot dot. So on all, we just have to do what? 3 plus 6, which is 9, plus 6, which is 15. So does this converge? Yes, and we can say the series as n goes from 1 to infinity of our a n, this right here converges to 15.